Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to St Martin's Church for our crib service. After last year, we thought, hooray, we'll be all back in church. Mm. It's not to be, it's not to be. But I'm delighted that we have a few children here from our ARC, our um, Sunday club, to help us tell the Christmas story. So if you'd like to just turn around and wave at that camera that's up there, you can say, hello, everybody watching at home. You're very welcome. So, first of all, it's become a tradition at this service that we um, make any donations we receive to the Children's Society. Children's Society do uh, brilliant things to help the lives of children and young people who are having a very difficult time. So, if you can give something this afternoon, uh, we'd really appreciate that. On our website, if you go to our newsletter for this week, there is a QR code that you can use or go straight to the Children's Society website directly. So when we have our services in church, we always talk to God. So we're going to do that by having a prayer. So on the screens uh, and appearing at home, I hope we have a prayer and I hope uh, let's all pray together. Say this prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love every single one of us, whoever and wherever we are, as we come together with family and friends to celebrate this Christmas. Help us put your son Jesus at the heart of our celebrations. As we share the story of his birth at Bethlehem, open our hearts to your love for us. Amen. Okay, so, children, I have a question for you. Is it Christmas yet? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow, brilliant. So it's not yet. We're very nearly there. So, before Christmas, we spend time preparing. I expect that you've all been opening your Advent calendars and eating the chocolates, okay? We've been doing that as well at St. Martin's, but also every Sunday for the last month, we have lit a candle up there. So I'm gonna ask Chris if he would light those four little candles. We can't light the big one today. That could be tomorrow, but we're going to light our four Advent candles. So let's hope this all works. One or two of the candles are getting a little bit short now, so it's a good thing it's Christmas tomorrow. Okay. Great. So, our first song is all about waiting. It's an Advent song. So it'll be up on the screens. If you know it, please do sing along. If you don't, you'll catch up with it very quickly. So, waiting for Christmas. Thank you. 
question for you. Where do we know about, from where do we know about the Christmas story? Which book? Yeah? The Bible. Bible. Was that what you were going to say as well? The Bible. So let's hear the first part of our story from the Bible. And Chris is going to read a little bit from St. Luke. There was a young woman called Mary who lived in the town of Nazareth. She was engaged to a carpenter called Joseph. God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary's house. When Mary saw the angel, she was frightened. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid. You are blessed by the Lord God. You will have a son, and his name will be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God Most High. He will be king, and his kingdom will never end. Poor Mary was very confused, and she asked the angel, How can this happen? I'm not married. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come down to you, and God's power will cover over you. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen as you have said. Then Gabriel the angel left her. Okay, so the start of our Christmas story, Mary is visited by the angel, and that's when she hears that amazing news. Um, I think we have a Mary here, do we? Do you want to come on up? Come on up. Okay, you want to sit down here. We have Mary. Do we have an angel? We might have a reluctant angel. Come up here with you. You can bring mummy or daddy with you as well. Absolutely fine. No, okay. We've we've got an angel off stage. An angel off stage. So, that's the start of our story. What else do we know about the Christmas story? What happened next? Did Mary just stay where she was? Yes. Mary and... Joseph, brilliant, went to Bethlehem. How did they get to Bethlehem? Walking, donkey, okay, fine. What happened when they got to Bethlehem? Hmm? Yeah, there was no room at the inn, okay. So where did they go? Stable, we have some brilliant people here who know their story, fantastic. Stable, okay. And then what happened? What happened, Mary? Um, and then they gave birth to the baby Jesus. Mary had a baby. Uh, yes. Okay, Mary had a baby. Fine. Then what happened? Did they have some visitors? Yeah. Who were the visitors? Go on. Um, the, um, um, the wise men and the shepherds. Wise men and shepherds came to visit. Right, that's pretty good. You know this story. We all think we know the story. Uh Uh-huh. But I think you need to watch this. Sit back and watch this. One December night, over 2,000 
thousand years ago, a shining star illuminated a gathering of kings, shepherds, angels, and animals round a baby in a stable. Twas the nativity, and it marked the end of a journey that began on a donkey's back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. hold up there, Jeeves. Yeah. I beg your pardon? Your nativity. That's not exactly how it happened. Here, look, let's start with that donkey. Neither of the gospel stories mentions Mary traveling by donkey. And given the 60 miles of rough terrain they traveled, it's more likely they used a wagon. <laughs> Minor details. But then the innkeeper informs uh, them there's no room Again, the Bible doesn't actually mention an innkeeper. And in the Greek, the word inn refers to an upper room in a house, not an actual motel. Oh, blast. Look, wherever it was, there was no room. So, Mary and Joseph were sent to the stable. Uh, no stable. <sighs> not in the Bible either. Now you're catching on. And in those days, most animals were typically kept in a cave. A cave? Yuppers. So it could have been that instead of a stable, the Bible doesn't really say. And the Star of Bethlehem? Duh, that's biblical. Well, we're actually right for once. It's a Christmas miracle. Okay, so now came the shepherds and the three kings. No kings. Three kings is from the song. The Bible says magi, which means wise men. Three wise men? That works. Well, not so fast. While the Bible does mention three gifts, it doesn't specify the number of wise men that brought them. You mean there could have been more? Oh yeah, a whole posse even. With a crowd like that, it's a miracle the baby Jesus never cried. What, no crying he makes? That's just a lyric from A Way in a Manger, not actual scripture. <laughs> well, of course he was crying. You just added a whole crowd of strange men. Eh, yes and no. There may have been many wise men, but they weren't there that night, you see? Okay, that's enough. Except for the blooming star of Bethlehem, you've just dismantled the most inspiring image of Christian tradition. So what's your point? Okay. So things that we think we know about the Christmas story are in fact not there. So the first thing was about the donkey. Was there a donkey? Okay, let's hear from St. Luke again. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. So, no donkey mentioned. But you know, Joseph was definitely there, so we do have a Joseph. But they didn't have cars, they didn't have buses, they didn't have trains. There was probably a donkey there somewhere. So we've included it in our story. Why not? Um, Anna, will you go and get our donkey that's just around the corner? Do we have a Joseph? No, but never mind. That's all right. But we have a donkey. And we all love donkeys. So let's have our donkey. Thank you. And I don't think it's Christmas unless we sing Little Donkey. So this is our next song, Little Donkey. Thank you. 
So the next thing in that uh, cartoon we saw was that there was no innkeeper and there was no stable. What does St. Luke say? While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Okay. Could have been a stable, could have been a barn, could have been a cave. It doesn't matter. But we do have a manger. Sorry, Anna, would you mind bringing us our manger? our manger. Let's put it like that. And of course, what else do we need? Mary, come on. What, what baby, Jesus. baby Jesus. So can we have baby Jesus? <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So what happens next? We have our first visitors. The shepherds. Okay. Now, I don't think we've got anything wrong with the shepherds according to that cartoon that we watched. But let's hear again what St. Luke says about the shepherds. There were shepherds in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town. A savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you are to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. Everyone who heard the shepherds was impressed. Okay, so we have shepherds visiting. They were the first visitors. They were told by the angels to come. Do we have any shepherds here? No, we're a bit short of shepherds today. Never mind. It's all in our imagination. That's fine. Mary, you're okay on your own. Absolutely fine. You've got your donkey and your baby. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> So, next visitors. So, we saw in that video that we often get this bit wrong because we have that song that we sing, We Three Kings. Mm -mm. But they weren't kings, were they? So, as always, we need to go back to the Bible and we can listen. Now, this time it's from St. Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, a group of wise men arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find the newborn king of the Jews? We saw a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We are on pilgrimage to worship him. When King Herod heard of the newborn king, he was very worried. He lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religious scholars in the city together and asked, where is the Messiah, the new king who is supposed to be born? They told him, in Bethlehem, as the prophet Micah foretold. Herod met the wise men from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he said, go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. 
as soon as you find him, send word. And I will join you at once in your worship. The wise men set off, and the star led them on until it hovered over the place in Bethlehem where Jesus was. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thank you. So we have not kings, we have wise men. And Matthew doesn't tell us how many. We've guessed it's three because there were three presents, but we don't really know. Now, I know we have at least one wise man here. We want to come on up. Oh, that's all right. And we know that they were <clears throat> led by a star. There's a star on the table there. It's something like to get the star and stand here with the star. It'd be brilliant. Come on, pretty, come on up here and stand with the star. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So, king, shepherds are on their way. Donkey, baby, Mary, we've got a fabulous angel now. We've got the star. Our next song, it's called, It Was On A Starry Night. So this is a lovely song. It's got Makaton signing to it. So if you know that, join in. Watch this. It was on a star. Nativity scene. It's not exactly how it would have been when Jesus was born, is it? It's not exactly how the story is that we know about it. So, what matters here? Let's go back to that cartoon we were watching because we heard someone say, but what's the point? Let's watch it from there. Well, I guess it's this. Even when all of the man-made traditions are stripped away, the eternal truths still remain. Whether they traveled by donkey or wagon, God brought them safely to the birthplace that was prophesied. Whether born in a stable or cave, God provided shelter in a strange new land. Whether there were three kings, three wise men, or many, 
God called the elect to bear witness and testimony to the birth of Emmanuel. So whether your manger looks like this, or like this, the one thing that remains unchanged is this. A baby boy, born of a virgin, this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Bless you, sir. I'll never look at the miracle of December 25th the same way again. December 25th? Oh, I almost forgot. Stop that. Music! So, no donkey, stable, Ooh, we don't know, could have been, doesn't matter, three wise men, could have been 30 wise men, could have been one wise man with three gifts, doesn't matter. So, what does matter? This is what the Bible tells us, hang on, Mary was visited by an angel and told she was going to have a baby. And that baby was going to be God's son. Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem. And when they were in Bethlehem, Mary had her baby. They were visited by shepherds who were summoned to Bethlehem by the angels. We know we've got angels. And we know there was a star because the wise men, three of them, 30 of them, followed the star. And why does this all matter? Well, it matters because God loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to be born on earth and to live on the earth. And as he grew up, he was to change the world forever. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. Christmas is tomorrow, very soon. So we have our baby, the focus of Christmas. So I think we need to sing. What should we sing? Away in a manger. We'll sing Away in a manger. Okay. Let's go and join.
let's talk to God again. So we have three short prayers. Thank you, God, for the wonderful Christmas story, for Mary and her courage to say yes to God, for Joseph for being so supportive, for the shepherds and the wise men who visited the baby Jesus in the manger. Amen. Thank you, God, for our families and friends at Christmas. We think of those who are sad because they can't meet up for whatever reason, but we thank you that we can still communicate even if we are on the other side of the world. Amen. Thank you, God, for giving us your son, Jesus. At Christmas, we worship him as the baby in the manger. At Easter, we worship him as our Saviour who died on the cross and rose again. Help us, Heavenly Father, to worship you and your Son each and every day because you walk with us wherever we are and whatever we do. Amen. A la song. See him lying on a bed of straw. So we're very nearly at the end. A reminder, if you can give just a little to the Children's Society via the QR code from our newsletter on the website or direct to the Children's Society, I know they would really appreciate that. Tomorrow, Christmas Day, we have services in church tomorrow and you can join us in church or watch them live streamed. So there's a service at 8 o'clock, sorry, 8.30 in the morning and at 10 o'clock in the morning. Join us in church or watch us live streamed at home. So one more sleep before Christmas Day and one more thing to ask God. We ask him to bless us today, tomorrow and always. Amen. So, those of us here in church, if we turn around to the camera again, if you've got your back, and we're going to wave bye-bye to all the people watching at home, and shall we shout Happy Christmas to them? If I count one, two, three, we'll shout Happy Christmas. You ready? One, two, three. Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas! And Ian will now play some music as we head home. Thank you. <laughs>